Hello everyone, I am Pasquale from uh, Eurecom in France and I'm going now to present you FaceRec that is an AI based system for performing face recognition in uh, video archives. Uh, the use case that uh, uh, we had in mind and uh, we uh, implemented this for is um, the presence of large video archives in which there are well-known individuals like Charles de Gaulle or Eisenhower in this picture and we want to, um, uh, to see if uh, um, these people appear in the video in which part and uh, the interaction with the other individuals uh, that we are studying. For doing this uh, we uh, perform uh, two kinds of actions. The first two are performed on uh, training images and are crawl the web and uh, train a classifier. And the second ones are recognize the faces and cluster recognition that are applied on videos. Okay, I try to uh, go in the detail of these four actions, starting from crawling the web. This is a, quite a crucial part of face rec. Uh, because uh, uh, given that these individuals are uh, well known, uh, we use uh, as a training set a set of images that are automatically crawled from uh, the search engines uh, on the web and downloaded in a, uh, a folder on the system. Then uh, as a domain expert can switch on or switch off uh, the images in, uh, in the collection that refers or not uh, to, in this case, to Eisenhower, in which have been uh, removed some picture that refers uh, clearly to other individuals. After that, uh, we perform a face detection and alignment using MTCNN in order to have uh, some aligned faces. These faces uh, on these faces, uh, a phase net preprocessed uh, pre model is applied that enables us to extract a set of uh, features that are then being used to train um, a combination of N1 versus all classifier. Why we use uh, this uh, N classifier instead of a multi classifier? This because uh, um, uh, in this way the system scale up much more easily. Okay, once that we have the model uh, so realized, we want to apply it to video, the video that we are, have in our collection. So frame by frame, we apply the following, uh, the, this, uh, uh, the, the following tasks. Uh, again, we will uh, use MTCNN to detect the faces in the frame of the video. Uh, use FaceNet to extract the, feed, the embedding features from these detected faces and then uh, these vectors are used for um, uh, uh, the, used through the classifier in order to extract the right prediction for uh, the uh, face. In the same time uh, we use an algorithm of tracking called sort uh, that is not based on a prediction but only on the position of the face inside the image in order to know uh, if the a face in a subsequent image in, uh, frames is part of the same uh, tracking also of the, of the same person that is moving in, uh, in the picture or not. The last step is the recognition of clusters uh, that put together the information coming from the classifier, so the prediction of the person, and the uh, tracking ID detected with the tracking algorithm. Um, so inside the same uh, tracking, we uh, look at which prediction have been made. We select the most represented one, uh, weighted by confidence. Then we merge also consecutive trackings that have been assigned to the same person. And finally, we filter by average confidence. Uh, some results that we are uh, um, uh, obtained so far. Yes, so your, your five minutes is up, so please uh, come yes, to the conclusion. I so Thank on you. a ground truth of uh, 200 uh, shots coming from uh, historical video, 
uh, we are able to detect mostly half of the people well, while we miss uh, the other half and have a very uh, low uh, wrong um, one people uh, detection. So for, for finishing, uh, we, you can interact with FaceRec using the web API uh, or the visualizer for uh, looking the result on a, on a screen or from the command line by downloading and installing uh, the library from uh, this URI on GitHub. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, let's see if there's uh, any question. I mean, I know you addressed a little bit in, in the, the talk, but of course my first thought was how to deal with, with ambiguous names. So what happens if uh, uh, in the first uh, initial image search, um, you might, let's say Michael Jackson quite basically knows, probably all the top images are, are the musician, but of course there is, a, I, I know at least a US military person called Michael Jackson. What, what if you're trying to identify him? And of course your training data is going to be just a musician. So yes, but basically uh, there are two ways in which uh, we address this problem. The first way is using human experts, so domain experts to switch off. Like uh, there, are, there is not so only the, the ambiguity in a, the problem, but also uh, coming the image from search engines. Uh, of course, there are images that are related, but actually not representing the, the person. So one solution is using domain expert and uh, web or an interface for switching on and off. The other one is uh, to um, uh, think that, that the most popular is the one that you are searching for. And uh, so uh, keeping only the images that are closer to the uh, average, uh, average set of, uh, of features. So uh, removing all of the outliers from the downloaded features. That is the automatic way to do it. Uh, we think that the domain expert in this case are much more consistent uh, for the results and uh, quite straightforward. Anyway, humans in the loop are always good uh, in this kind of processing, at least for training. <laughs>